Hi, my name is Vaikuntan Raja Ratnam. I'm a senior consultant hand surgeon working in Singapore. This uh, talk will be on the anatomy and biology of the flexor tendon in the hands. The learning objectives for this lecture is that at the end of this talk you should be able to understand and describe the anatomy of the flexor tendon system in the hand and its relevance in surgery and also describe and relate the normal physiology of its tendon and its implication in tendon injuries. The tendon composes mainly of water as most part of the human body and consists of 30% dry mass which mainly consists of a small amount of cellular matter known as the tenocytes which then secrete the collagen matrix, the extracellular component which goes to give the tendon its properties. It consists of elastin, proteoglycons, glycoproteins and inorganic material. The main component is collagen which allows for its uh, tensile strength and its ability to uh, produce loading and uh, therefore provide the functions of the tendon which is to flex the joints. The microanatomy of the tendon is basically consisting of fascicles and each of these fascicles goes down to the level of a tropocollagen which is a linear structure of collagen mat material secreted by the tenocytes, produced by the tenocytes within the tendon. These then go on to form microfibril, subfibril, fibril and fascicles and which then eventually uh, result in the composite structure of the tendon. For the tendons in the hand, they form an important structure to provide the animation of the fingers and digits and therefore there are nine flexor tendons which traverses from the forearm through the uh, carpal tunnel at the level of the wrist and there are two wrist flexors and there's a palmaris longus which is superficial to the carpal tunnel and they therefore as a unit provide the fundamental uh, functions of the hand is to perform a grasp. The extensive tendon uh, on the extensive surface are able to therefore uh, replace the hand to the neutral position following a grasp which is fundamental to hand function. The unique nature of the flexor tendons in terms of the profundus and superficialis is that the flexor digitorum superficialis is named as such because the belly of the muscle lies superficial to the profundus in the forearm and in the palm the FDS remains in bola to the FDP but the FDS has to be inserted into the base of the middle phalanx and therefore it splits at the level of the neck of the metacarpal phalangeal joint or the metacarpal head in the hand to form two sp slips of the FDS which then spirals around the FDP tendon to around at the level of the proximal phalanx then to conflue together uh, at the level of the neck and then is inserted into the base of the middle phalanx. The FDP then goes uh, continues uh, now superficial to the FDS at the level of the mid shaft of the proximal phalanx and then goes to be inserted into the terminal phalanx. The region where the FDP and FDS are together from the level of the metacarpal head right up to the uh, base of the middle phalanx is called the uh, zone 2 or no man's land. In the level of the pro uh, proximal phalanx where the FDS decussates around the FDP, uh, this is called the chiasma of camphor. Camphor's chiasma is how the FDS embraces, splits into two, embraces the FDP and goes beneath the FDP while allowing the FDP to come up superficially from its depth so as to be facilitates its insertion into the uh, distal phalanx. As the flexor tendons function is to help flex the metacarpal phalangeal joint and the proximal and distal interphalangeal joint. It is therefore required to go through to its 
final destination at the base of the middle phalanx for the FDS and the base of the terminal phalanx for the FDP, if there were no mechanism to hold the flexor tendons down, any attempt to flex the joints by a longitudinal force along the flexor tendon will result in a phenomenon known as bowstringing and reduce the effectiveness of the tendon and therefore will not get full flexion. To overcome this, there are special structures called the pulley system, which are hard structures that are circular in nature that holds down the tendon to the bone. And they're divided into annular pulley and circular uh, and, and cruciform pulley. The, uh, the five annular pulleys, which are A1 to A5, and between them are the cruciform pulley, which are shaped of a cross, which allows for movement at the joint level. So in full flexion, all the annular pulleys will come, will touch each other as the cruciform pulleys collapse. In this diagram, you can see very clearly the two tendons and how the chiasma of camphor allows for the FDP to uh, come from a deeper structure to the more superficial. Here we see clearly the blood supply to the tendon through what is known as the long vinculum and the short vinculum. The long vinculum is much more proximal and here in the FDS you can see them at the base of the proximal phalanx. It's along this vinculi that branches from the digital arteries enter the tendon dorsally to provide a segmental blood supply to the flexor tendon. Though the flexor tendons are relatively avascular, they do have this dorsal blood supply coming from these vessels along the free edge of the retinaculum. So both the short and long retinaculums are the feeder or mesentery through which blood supply enters the flexor tendon. The flexor tendons are also uh, encased by synovial sheaths that makes them unique. These synovial sheaths have two layers. Uh, there is the visceral and the parietal. The visceral synovial sheath lines the tendon and the parietal synovial sheath is just around the visceral sheath. There's a potential space between these two linings and these are supplied abundantly by microcirculation that provides the nutrients through effusion to supply the superficial uh, tenocytes in the tendon. Therefore, the tendon receives nutrition from the synovial sheath and which is, uh, has got significant blood supply. Though they receive dorsally, uh, the tendons receive um, blood supply through the free edge of the vincula uh, from the digital arteries, then these blood vessels run longitudinally along the length of the trunk of the tendon to augment the blood supply. But most of the superficial layers of the tendon receives its nutrition not by directly from the blood but from the synovial sheath. Here we see the relative positions of the various pulley systems and it shows you that the artery and nerve lies on the either side of the tendon in the digit. At the level of the digit, the neurovascular bundle is very close to the tendon and therefore any deep injuries, especially with sharp instruments which results in flexor tendon injuries in the digit, will usually have associated nerve or end or vessel injury. This slide uh, clearly shows the junction where the tendon inserts into the bone which can be seen at the level of the B and T is where the tendon is and the interface uh, 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 zone is relatively vascular and is along this to blood supply enters the tendon. Note the hypocellular state of the tendon. Here we see a high power magnification of a similar system showing vascular channels with tenocytes in the area of the tendon and in the interface area we can see significant blood supply and more cellular structures. This diagram illustrates how the extra uh, tendinous structures, the synovial sheath, is able to supply a significant amount of uh, fine microcirculatory uh, channels to help provide the nutrient to the superficial area of the flexor tendon. And this loose areolar tissue uh, 
brings about nutrition and uh, is very prone to ischemia and trauma. This clinical photograph clearly shows the FTP which is in the center at the level of the chiasma which has been divided which is being uh, pulled distally and the two limbs of the FDS that has been divided has been sh uh, shown by the two uh, sutures uh, um, retracting them uh, on either side. This is a zone 2 injury uh, at the level of the insertion of the FDS to the base of the proximal phalanx. So therefore the blood supply provides through the vincular circulation an intrinsic blood supply which runs longitudinally along the length of the tendon in a dorsal uh, position and, and provides the intrinsic nutrition of the tendon. However, the most portion of the tendon is supplied by synovial fluid which is produced by the synovial sheath and the blood supply to the synovial sheath therefore helps to produce the fluid to allow for nutrition to reach the tenocytes in the periphery and uh, of the cross-section of a flexor tendon. The FPL does not have a vinculum and can therefore tolerate more tendon advancement without disturbing its blood supply because of its unique uh, uh, blood supply.